Hey guys, Moms Against Medical Bullying. So I just wanted to talk about this show that I watched yesterday on Netflix. Uh, the show is called Al Rawabi School for Girls. And uh, I thought the show was pretty awesome. Um, so basically, I think the show takes place in Jordan. And if I'm not mistaken, the show's primary language was in, is in Arabic, but they had the English voiceovers, British English. So, um, yeah. So in this show, I don't know what, like, I know some of the girls are Muslim and speak Arabic and I don't know if they were all Muslim because I know some who are Muslim don't wear a hijab. Um, and some do, and so yeah, all of them spoke Arabic, so yeah, I used to have a friend that was from Lebanon, her family, and they spoke Arabic, um, I used to have a Turkish friend as well, and how these girls are treated is similar to what was depicted in this show, and so basically, it kind of depicted how, like, how it's a little bit difficult growing up in that culture as a as a young woman because especially if you have brothers like if you have older brothers forget it um it's very difficult they're very controlling um more controlling more so than caring <laughs> so like my friend my my friend that I had when I was in like grammar high school, she had a Lebanese Christian Lebanese family. They spoke Arabic and she had an older brother and basically the older brother can do whatever he wanted to. He had way more freedom as where she didn't. And the brothers are also controlling over the younger sisters. So and uh the same with my other friend except she was Turkish. She's Turkish. So anyways, um so that's what this show the show is about this girl in high school who's getting bullied by these three other girls. It's a clique made up of these three girls. The one is, she's the real bully. Um, and then she you have her best friend. And then she has two other friends who also do uh, partake in the bullying. Um, so they, they bully this one girl. I mean, they, they bully everyone. For the most part, but they were really hitting hard on this one girl, the main character, and uh, you know they, you know they bullied her emotionally, and then they did it physically. Um. So yeah, so the girl was under this type of abuse from these girls for a while, and then in the show she gets beat up by them, and then. So what happens is they have this meeting in the school and they're, and so there was this incident in the locker room where the popular girl who was bullying blamed her target for, or her victim for uh, touching her boobs in the wrong way. And all the other girls in the locker room saw this. They knew the truth, but they all took the side of the bully. Which I think is a bit Stockholmish in a way. I was reading on Wikipedia about Stockholm syndrome and like, um, so you know they took the side of the known abuser. You know, um, I think they took her side because they wanted, you know, for survival in a way. You know, and uh, okay, so they take her side. And they had this big meeting with all the parents and the students and this detective. And they're like, whoever knows what happened, you know, who beat this girl up. And nobody's really speaking up. So the bully girl stands up and says, look, I had an incident where I was defending myself against her. She tried to touch my boobs in the locker room. And the principal's like, okay, who witnessed this incident? And all, mostly all the girls raise their hand and say that, yeah, it's true that the victim girl, the girl who's a victim of bullying had touched this bully girl in the wrong way. So they all took the bully side, which, you know, it's like Stockholm syndrome. 
So anyways, um, not even the girl's mother believes her. They're Muslim and she's like, it's all about you have brought shame on our family. How could you do this? You know, and the mom was like, how am I supposed to believe you when all these people say this thing about you? So they really destroyed this girl physically and emotionally. They tore her up and this girl <clears throat> sought to re retaliate after she went through her phase of being sad and depressed and all that she she's finally decided you know what i'm gonna get these girls back um i'm gonna make sure they never bully anyone again and how she did it was subvertly she didn't go and try to beat them up with her fist she devised a plan to take them down one by one so out of these three bully girls the one girl she's she wears a hijab she's not allowed to take that off right and then the one, the main bully girl, she has two older brothers that are very controlling. One has a gun. She's frightened to death of them. And then the other girl, she gets beat up by her father. So those three bully girls. So, so anyhow, the victim uh, devises a plan of retaliation. And what she does to the girl who wears a hijab is she pretends to be you know, a boy talking to her on the internet, gets her to take off her hijab, take a picture with her hair down, and they post it on social media, and that destroys her because her family pulls her out of that school, and they, yeah, that was it. She's, she was done. So that was, she, she subvertly got her out of the way. And then for the main bully girl, she was skipping school, and so the girl found out about it and she's like i'm gonna rat her out so rats her out uh to the um one of the teachers um and the girl happens to know the exact location where this girl skipped school to be at with her boyfriend because people put things on social media is so dumb so they know she knew the exact location so then um so the the victim the girl who was being bullied who's seeking retaliation, sends that location to the girl's brother who has a gun. And the girl's bro the brother runs over there and all of a sudden you hear he's uh, he punches the boyfriend and the last thing you see in the show is he's pointing a gun at the girl's head and the, the scene turns to outside and you just hear a gunshot. So we don't know, like, if... I hate when shows end like that. It's not right. So we don't know if he shot her or if he just shot up in the air. Sometimes people do that. They're really angry. They just shoot off to the side, you know, kind of to scare you. We don't know if the girl died or not. But at the end, they show her other friend, Rania, who also partook in the bullying. They they saw her crying. But before the before this girl had the encounter, they were trying to get the girl who was seeking retaliation to stop you know they were saying look sh this is serious like i know what we did to you was messed up but this is even more serious and the girl was offended by that because she's like are you meaning to tell me like what you did to my life wasn't serious but ranya knew that that her friend could possibly die because of this because her family would find out that she was skipping school to be with a boy like that's very taboo in that culture like it you don't you just don't do that so that's how the show ends and it made me think because the girl who was seeking retaliation the her friend there she had two friends that were helping her do it because they were sick of the bullying too but when the one girl got expelled got taken out of school because she was showing her hair her parents removed her from school because she shamed their family by showing her hair on social media um they were like look we're destroying people's lives like we don't want to take like we took it far enough like we don't want to take this farther you know like they were having compassion on the bullies well this girl who was seeking retaliation had a different mindset because she, she's the one who got felt the brunt of the pain and she was like i'm taking it all the way you know i don't care like what they did to me is unex unexcusable so at the end, they end up, the two girls who were once on the retaliator side, they ended up having more compassion for the bullies than for their friend who had been bullied by these girls. So I thought that was interesting because there's this 
there's this paradigm, there's this thing that happens where when someone seeks retaliation and gets back at their bully, people all of a sudden feel bad for the bully and or the bullies. And it made me really wonder, like, why we do that, you know? So I had something written here and I wrote, um, okay, so this is kind of like what was coming to me about bullying. So bullying is a coping mechanism uh, to to people who are feeling or who are overpowered and powerless over their own life, like in their home life. Bullying is pain directed at an innocent person. The bully is not strong enough to fight what pains them directly, right? The girl, the bully girl, she was not strong enough to fight her brothers, to fight her family. Like there was no way. She was completely overpowered by these people. Um, she had no, there was nothing she can do about it except to take that, put it on an innocent person, right? So the bully is not strong enough to fight what pains them, so they direct the pain on some someone they can overpower, which makes them feel a sense of power and control. They use that to help them overcome that sense of powerlessness that they have in their life um, and against their own captors and against their own abusers. And then I wrote, maybe it's a way to feel on top or in control, you know? It's possible we understand internally that people turn bullies because they are experiencing immense difficulty or pain that they cannot express otherwise. Um, they cannot express that difficulty to those who are overpowering them. They have no say, they have no control there. So the only sensible reaction for these people is to continue the chain of overpowering others. Um, but when the bully becomes once again overpowered by the retaliator, so the retaliator hits back and, you know, and gets and overpowers the bully basically, and then others feel sorry for the bully as they have been doubly overpowered and lost their coping mechanism. Um, so, and I was wondering, um, okay, so I wrote, maybe not all people who sense powerlessness become bullies, but those who cannot cope with or deal with the feeling of being overpowered in their home life enjoy a sense of control over others. Um, and will result to bullying as a coping mechanism. Uh, let's see here. So like I said, by the end of the show, um, her friends were no longer with her and didn't agree with retaliating against these people um, for what they'd done to her. And, and I was like, this is such an interesting phenomena that's, that's taking place, you know? And I thought, is it because everyone has the basic law of God written on their hearts and in their conscience. Um, and so the Bible mentions in many places, I'll just read a few, um, about not seeking retaliation. So Proverbs twenty four twenty nine says, Do not say, I'll do them as they have done to me. I'll pay them back for what they did. Proverbs twenty twenty two says, Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong wait for the lord and he will avenge you romans 12 17 says do not repay anyone evil for evil be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone right because it's just so weird like you could everyone could see everyone could see that this girl was being bullied and they too were being bullied but she she got like a lot of it. Um, and, and I think another reason why she got a lot of the bullying was because she wasn't scared of them. Um, like on the school bus, they were like, oh, move your seat. And she was like, no, you know, she wasn't, she did not seek to please them. So I think that made them even more mad um, They were that, that she was not afraid of them. So they really went on to attack her. But yeah, like I said, by the end, even I was feeling sorry for the bullies by the end of the show because the show also reveals 
their own lives and what they go through at home and how their parents talk to them and what they deal with. And when you see that, you start to have some compassion for the bully. But then, like, it's so funny because in the beginning of the show, and you see how they're treating her, really abusing her, like just gaslighting her and just tormenting this poor girl and um you're like you almost wish you're like oh man she needs to get them back there needs to be justice for this right and then towards the end of the show they start showing you more of the bullies lives and what they go through and you start to have compassion for them and it's so weird how that happens but yeah this girl just she took it all the way and she stood her ground with it but at the end of the day, nobody really respected her for it. But, you know, she was proud in, of, uh, you know, of herself. But no one else really cheered her on. So anyways, I just wanted to share that about bullying in this show. Uh, it kind of inspired me. So, um, everyone take care.